What also hasn't changed uh, since last year is how I feel about all those brilliant, brilliant young readers out there, um, particularly the teenage and young adult readers who I've been privileged enough to write for over the past five years. The worst thing I think our current government, and in fact we as a culture do about teenagers, in my opinion, is that we only seem to discuss them in negative terms, what they can't do, what they aren't achieving, how much they don't read. And though, of course, there are areas of concern, these questions only ever apply to some teenagers some of the time. I mean, did anybody watch BBC Young Musician of the Year? Anybody see that? Yeah? Those were teenagers doing staggeringly difficult, staggeringly beautiful things. We've heard a lot today about the Shadowing website, and I'm a huge fan of the Shadowing program. I think it's one of the most brilliant things in all of the book world. But if you look at the website today, there's 13,000 reviews. 13,000. You know, where are the, where's the praise for the 13,000 reviewers? You know, where's the tablet articles about what a great, amazing, positive thing 13,000 young people have done? All it takes is bothering to meet a teenager or three, and you'll see what I said last year remains true, which is that they are the same interesting, curious, sensitive, smart, compassionate, funny, questioning, brilliant people they've always been. And yet all we ever hear about them is in negative terms. And why have we allowed that to happen, I wonder? I mean, I, as a teenager, I was a typically atypical teenager, and I think that's the secret of being a teenager. I think that's the operating principle of a teenager, is that there's no such thing as a typical teenager. Even the popular kids feel different than everybody else. I think it is the standard principle of a teenager to feel alone. And I, um, for example, I was the gay, preppy, deeply anxious son of American fundamentalist Christians. So, I couldn't have felt more different than if I'd had a tail. Uh, so, I mean, I, I felt like nobody understood what, what I was going through. And I don't mean that, not in a self-pitying way, because, but because I literally had no contrary experience to tell me anyone understood what I was going through. Because I think to be a teenager is to yearn. I yearned for someone to tell me that I was all right. I yearned for someone to tell me I was, everything was going to be all right. I mean, I can't even think about that, that It Gets Better campaign, you know that campaign? I can't even think about that with tearing up because uh, I just wanted someone to just say those words to me, just once, you know, just once. And uh, you know, there were good times too, of course there were good times, but I look back at the teenage me with real tenderness, real affection. You know, I so want to be able to tell him that he's gonna be all right. I've always said that I don't write books for other people because when I've tried to write them for other people, they've been a disaster. I can only write books for myself, and paradoxically, that's the only time anyone else has wanted to read them. And so when I write for teenagers and young people, I'm really writing for the teenage me, the me that needed to be taken seriously at least once in a while, the me that needed to hear that no matter how dark it might feel, that there was light ahead. And in a real way, I think this is what all of my books um, for teenagers have ended up being about, about being heard about being taken seriously, about being treated, treated as a complex creation who doesn't always get things right, but importantly, also doesn't always get things wrong. And being told that there's hope, there's life, there's laughter and love, um, that hurt is real, that pain is real, yes, of course it is, but so is possibility. So is a livable, wondrous future, is by what anyone may tell you. Uh, I get letters, and I know all um, writers for young people get letters. It's one of the best parts of the job, but um, I, get, I get letters from lonely kids from gay kids, from disabled kids, from just average regular kids who reached out because they heard a voice that was saying something else than that they weren't enough, that they weren't worth listening to, that they were more than just a problem that wasn't being solved. Uh, I like to say that I wrote a book for the teenage me and discovered to my astonishment and delight that I'd never actually been alone. And, uh, oof. Um, and so something else that hasn't changed since last year, which is that these are the people I want to thank the most. The young readers who love my books. The young readers who hate my books. You know, the young readers who argue about my books and other people's books and want to read more and more and more books because they're the ones who don't get praise. They're the ones who get treated by this government as laboratory animals to be experimented on. They're the ones who only ever hear loud public voices telling them that they don't read, that there's something wrong with them, that they're failing, even when they are demonstrably not. Do these look like kids who are failing to you today? Yeah. They're the ones I owe this to. The readers that I meet, the ones who are a walking, talking rebuttal to every negative thing that ever gets said about them. 
the ones that stick two fingers up to us and thrive anyway. I said that one. Okay, okay sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, I ju just to say, I am, I, am, I am amazed and humbled and really quite overwhelmed about winning this award again. And uh, so for myself, for the wonderful Jim Kay, uh, for the great Siobhan Dowd, for all of those incredible young readers out there who willingly grant me the privilege of their attention, and uh, maybe most especially of all for that awkward, well-meaning, badly dressed, yearning a teenage me who made it out okay. Uh, I, uh, I very, very gratefully accept this tremendous honor. Thank you very much. Thank you.